General Jack Keen now analysis first time on a Monday morning as we begin a new week day five general what's important to you. Well what, what's actually taking place here the units in the north that were going against Kharkiv and Kiev itself they've taken an operational pause that lasted almost a couple of days why because they needed to bring in resupplies and he also brought in some reinforcements. The units in the south are the ones that are having a success. And it's interesting, there's actually a reason for it. They, they come from the southern military district. And these are units that have been exercising together for years. And, and they operate as whole units. In other words, uh, groups of battalions that, are, that form a regiment, groups of regiments that form a division. And they fight as a whole unit. And that has had, that is contributing to their success. The units that are coming down to, from Kiev, from Belarus, and Kharkiv, from Russia, they, they are a hodgepodge of units. They, don't, they don't, do not fight normally. They haven't been exercised normally as regiments and divisions, particularly for the ones coming out of Belarus. And that was early on one of the reasons why uh, the Institute for the Study of War wasn't convinced that there was going to be an attack on, on Kiev from Belarus, because the, most of those units came from the east. They had never really worked together, and yet they would be the main effort, which Kiev is, didn't make a lot of sense operationally and tactically, but that's what we have. So what we're going to see now in these two cities, as you pointed out, Bill, in, in Kharkiv and also eventually in Kiev, is the combat formations will enter that city, and right now the preparatory fires are taking place in Kharkiv, and this can be uh, quite devastating. This is long-range artillery rocket artillery, which is very devastating. And then the introduction, we know they have them with them, and I think there's been some introduction in Kharkiv of thermobaric bombs, which are bombs that have uh, fuel in them, and they create just bastions of fire as a result of it. And they're, they're quite devastating. They've used them on the Ukraine military back in 2014, and they would take down an entire battalion assembly area of seven, eight hundred troops in a matter of minutes. So that is what could be the foretell of things to come if the operational units, the ground units, are not able to make progress, then they will begin the systematic rubbling of the city, which mm -hmm. is, a, is a decision they have been trying to avoid for all the obvious reasons. Russia is facing significant international condemnation as it is. They don't want further pushback from their own population when uh, a plan like that unveils. But that is their history. Chechnya in 2000, they made war on innocent civilians in towns and cities. In Syria, they made war on the same thing, innocent people in Aleppo, in Idlib province. It was devastating to include taking down uh, underground hospitals using deep penetration bomb, actually war crime. So I don't know if that decision has been made yet, but if they have a problem making progress inside those two big cities, they will likely do that. The other thing is there's talk about the introduction of forces from Belarus. They have a small military there. They're, they're less effective than the Russians. Um, they would likely use paratroopers who have trained with the Russians. They're not that sizable. I don't think they're going to add that much to what has taken place here. If they use them as reinforcements, you know, for example, for Kyiv, which would be the likely thing, to open up their own axes um, in the West, I, I don't think they have the logistical support nor the wherewithal to do something mm -hmm. like that. That's an interesting point because apparently, you know, the Zelensky's team is going to be going to talk with the Russians in Belarus, but I don't see how they can do that with any confidence if Belarus is saying that they're going to join with Russia in fighting them, General. Yeah, well, Belarus is in the orbit of, of Putin. There's no, I mean, Lukashenko used to give Putin a lot of problems. He's the longest serving dictator uh, in Europe. And, and then as he was being threatened by his people to run him out of the country, what did Putin do? He put troops in there to stabilize that situation. So Lincoln show, uh, Lukashenko owns his existence now to Putin. He's going to do his bidding. If, if they're going to put troops in, uh, in, <clears throat> into Ukraine, it's because Putin wants it to happen. Right. And, and he'll, march to, he'll march to his drum. General, thank you so much. Thank you, sir.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.